So this is 2022 poll. Polls. Uh, just this is a bunch of different ways to look at the same basic effect. In the United States, Democrats, younger Americans identify dealing with climate change as a top priority. U.S. adults, 42% say uh, 42% say that dealing with climate change should be a top priority. 11% of Republicans, 65% of Democrats. And we could see this effect throughout. 46% uh, of Americans say human activity contributes a great deal to climate change. By the way, this is a little bit different than what we're d discussing. I was um, just looking through different polls. In the public, there seems to still be uncertainty about the uh, how much humans contribute to climate change. More than... Well, I mean, it sentence. would only be 24% that disagree with the UN climate panel, right? Three, three quarters but would agree. Are you uncomfortable about the 29? I, I, no, 29 is actually, it's exactly right. I mean, okay. the well, UN I doesn't say it's all, well, they say that could be yeah. the border case. But anyway, this is interesting. But to me, across all these polls, if you look Republican versus hmm. Democrat, yeah. Republican um, it, it say that 17% say, it's a great deal. Democrats say 71% say it's a, it's a great deal. And you just see this complete division. I think you probably, with the COVID pandemic, uh, you know, the, you can ask a lot of questions like this. Do masks work? Are they an effective method to slow transmission of a pandemic? You, you'll probably have a, the same kind of polls about Republicans and Democrats. And... Um, <laughs> What <laughs> while the effectiveness of masks to me is a scientific question. But um so there's different truths here apparently. One is a scientific truth. Uh one is a truth held by the scientific community, which seems to be also different than the scientific truth sometimes. Uh and the other is the public perception that has that's uh, polluted or affected by political affiliation. Sure. And then there's uh whatever is the uh, narrative that's communicated by the the media, they will also have a question, the answer to the question of whether masks work or not, and they will also have an answer to the question about all these climate related things. So that's a long way of asking the question of what, how is politics mixed into all of this? Yeah, on the communication front, on the figuring out what the right policy is front, on the friction of humanity. Yeah. Uh, in the face of the right policies. Well, I've written a ton on this. Uh, after I had that conversion about the social science in yeah. 2006, I began digging in a lot more on how people hold beliefs and what they do as opposed to what they think and questions about polling. And there's two things that come to me that make me not worry about the basic literacy, like is, is climate change X percent of whatever? I don't really care about that. And I'll explain why. Um, for one thing, more science literacy, more basic literacy, like what is a greenhouse gas, all that stuff. Dan Kahane, K-A-H-A-N at Yale. He's actually at Yale Law School. The last decade, he did all this work on what he calls cultural cognition, which is, and he did uh, studies that showed, you know, how what you believe emerges based on culture, based on your background, your, your red, blue, your, where you are in the country. And one of the, one of the really disturbing findings was that the people who have the most basic science literacy, like who know the most about greenhouse effect or whatever, they're at both ends of the spectrum of views on climate, dismissives and alarmed. Mm -hmm. Steve Coonan, as I mentioned, is a good example. He's a brilliant physicist. And he knows every all the science, and he's completely at the end of skepticism. Um, Will Happer, who was close to being Trump's science advisor, was even more out there. And he's on, they're both on the uh, Jason committee that advises the government on big strategic things. Um, and people at the, who are really alarmed about it also have the same belief. So as a journalist, I was thinking, do I just spend my time writing more explanatory stories that explain the science better? No, 
do I dig in on this work to understand what brings people together? And then these same surveys, the same science shows you, if you don't make it about climate, among other things, this becomes, you don't have to worry about this anymore. If you Google for, Google for no red blue divide climate Revkin, you'll find a piece I did with some really good graphs. Essentially it shows that in America, this is the Yale group again, the, uh, their climate communication group. There's no red blue divide on energy innovation, none. We need more climate energy, clean energy innovation. There wasn't even a divide country by state by state on whether CO2 should be regulated as a pollutant. But it's all like, what are the questions you ask? If you ask about innovation, if you ask about uh, more, in, oh, more incentives for renewable power, Oklahoma, Iowa, you know, I did a piece when I was at ProPublica showing that the 17 states that were fighting uh, Obama in court over his clean power plan were actually, the majority of them were actually meeting the targets that the clean power plan had because they're expanding wind power already. Not because of the climate, because it makes money sense and energy sense. So you don't think there's a political divide in this? There is on climate, if you call it climate. If you say it's a climate, do you believe in the climate crisis? You're not asking what kind of energy future do you want in your town? And so if you, if you ask that question, the polarization goes away. I guess what I'm asking, is there polarization on policy? No, well, well there, again, the bipartisan infrastructure law that was passed last November, that was bipartisan. All of Congress said yes. And that's a trillion dollars, several hundred billion of which are for cleaner energy and resilience. Yeah, but that's... And that, yeah, but it's but, not a climate bill. Hmm. And it wasn't a tax. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's incentives. So the word climate and similar words are just used as part of the signaling, like masks. It's, it's, Absolutely. it's not. As Dan Cahane's work, the guy at Yale, um, he really demonstrated powerfully abortion, gun rights, um, climate, and, and a more parsed level nuclear power has enduring camps that for and against. Why, why, why do the camps form? Some of it's cultural cognition. It's how you grew up. It's what, what you fear. There's no common human frame. For, Is it because of like, like folks, like c certain individuals like Al Gore? Ah, like he would make a film. He cares about this thing. He's a Democrat. Therefore, I hate this thing. Th therefore, I don't like this thing. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, when people get attached to an issue, if that's what pops into your head hmm. when you hear climate, then and it got politicized. It became emblematic, and and the, you know the whole vaccine thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not American, so I should stay a little bit out of this. But I think uh, it, it seems to me that a lot of the thing that people believe and talk about is really about what they worry that that will lead to in terms of policy down the line. So a little bit like, do masks work? I'm, I'm sort of Im imagining, I don't know whether this is true, but I think part of it is if I say masks work, they're gonna force me to wear it for the next year. So it doesn't work because then I don't have to wear it kind of thing that it's really, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're looking much further down the line. And certainly on climate, it seems to me that a lot of the people who say it's not real, it's not because they don't know it's, of course it's real, but it's that they don't want you to then come and regulate it really totally. heavily. Yeah. Uh, so it's because it's, they don't like top down government. Yeah. And, right. and also because they don't want another tax. And, you know, that, yeah. there's lots of, 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 so it's, it's really, it's not a science, it's not a say, straight science question. It really is a question of what do you want to do? And that's where I think, Andy, you're much, much more right in saying we should, you know, have that discussion. So what do you want to do? Because that will be a much easier conversation to say, do you want to do really smart, cheap stuff? Or do you want to do pretty dumb, expensive <laughs> stuff? When you put it that way, you, you can get most people on board. Of and, course, it's not as simple as that, I know. And, but, and it gets yeah. back to what you said earlier, that again, you talked about cooper collaborative cooperation or whatever. There's a guy at Columbia, Peter Coleman, who runs this thing called the Difficult Conversations Laboratory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And when I first heard about it, I was like, oh man, we need that, yeah. you know? <laughs> And uh, his background is psychology and uh, conflict resolution, mostly at the global scale related to atrocities that countries are trying to get over and 
Um, and there's there's a science to how to hold a better conversation. Is, is you either through experience or whatever. No, um, you could if you hold a debate. Like I wouldn't want to be in a debate with Bjorn. We could find lots of things we disagree on. Mm -hmm. But that's that takes it back to the win lose model, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who want that's not how you make progress. And, and what Peter, uh, what I what I learned absorbed from him, Peter Coleman, because I was thinking like we need room for agreement. I need to build a room for agreement. My blog and at the times and then the stuff I do now, you know, it's like, how can we talk and come to agreement? He says, no, no, you don't want agreement. You want cooperation. That allows you to hold on to your beliefs. But to, we're, you know, we can disbelieve, we can disagree on all these things, but let's cooperate on that one thing. And that's, that's a really valuable distinction that's needed so much in this arena because as I said earlier, you can parse it right down to the whole menu of things Joe Manchin wanted, you know, um, transmission lines. You're, now we're going to have big fights over transmission lines. We've got billions of dollars to spend expanding America's grid. And every community in America is going to say, not here. So how do you foster a federal, local dialogue that allows that to happen if you want to have any hope of a better grid? Um, so that's like... That, those insights come from behavioral sciences that I think are completely under undervalued um, in this area. Pilke loves to quote, uh, I can't. I think it's Lippert, but oh, Walter you know, Lippmann. Lippmann, yes, that uh, democracy is not about you know everybody agreeing, but it's about different people dis disagreeing, but doing the same, doing thing. one thing yeah. together. Yes, I mean agreeing that we're going to do this thing, so you can yep. disagree but still do a thing. You know, possibly for very different you know, uh, reasons. Yeah. And, and there's fine. there's an amazing video clip that shows this so powerfully. 2015 was the build up to the Paris talks that led to the Paris Agreement. You know this, and a really talented journalist at CNN at the time, John Sutter, who's from Oklahoma originally. He um he saw another Yale study that was a county by county study of American attitudes on global warming. Like right down to the county level. And there's this little glowing data point in Woodward County, West uh, Oklahoma. Woodward County, Oklahoma was ground zero for climate skepticism, climate denial, whatever you want to call it. And he thought, oh, I'm going to go there. And he went there just as a, just to meet people on the street, to talk to them about energy and weather. And, and he did these little interviews. And there's this one with this guy who's like a middle-aged oil company employee like a business, like an administrator, Thai, Thai kind of guy. And he he starts out the interview and the guy is saying like, you know, well, you know, God controls the environment. And if you're watching this, you're going, okay, this is going to be interesting. And the backstory, by the way, is the guy, he, he paid for the local uh, playground to have dinosaurs and people, like uh, toy dinosaurs and people all at the playground because he believes in creation, you know, right. 6,000 year creation. So, yeah. so, so that's the guy, right? And, and then he gets to energy, and the guy says, you know, the same guy who believes God controls the environment says, you know, we have half of our roof covered with solar panels, and we want to get off the grid entirely. And when I show this to, I show this to audiences, and I say, just pause and think about that for a second. If you went, why do you think that that's happening? And it's because he's independent. He wants to have his own source of power. He's libertarian. He doesn't want the government telling him what to do. He would never vote for Hillary, I guarantee you. This is 2015. But he wanted to get off the grid entirely to be his own, to be to be himself. And so then I say, okay, so if, if you were going around the country with your climate crisis pla placard and you go to Woodward County, do you think that would be a productive way to go to that place and make your case? And the answer is pretty obvious, no. If you go in there and you listen, like listening is such an important property that we all forget, including journalists. Um, you're much more apt to find a path to cooperation. You could talk to him about, I guarantee if I went there today, maybe I should go to talk about this new bill, $370 billion. How do we make that work You know, at the local level? How do we answer that guy at the energy department, Jigger Shah? So how do we put this to work to get our buses off electricity, to get them electrified or transition our street lamps and stuff? You could have a good chat with him. If you go in there and say, I'm here to debate you to death on global warming. Forget about it. 